a big dilemma for oncologists is to know how to treat AML in patients who are above the age of 70. And uh, many studies include patients 60 and older, and it, there is a big difference between 60 to 70 and 70 and older. So what we decided to do with this project is a systematic review of the literature on all patients in the age of 70 and above. And a lot of times, you have studies that include patients 70 and above, but they don't publish the subgroup analysis. So we contacted the investigators and we asked them for their subgroup data for the patients 70 and older. So in the end, we had 68 trials and 13,381 patients. Uh, it's, it's the largest study that I know of, of recently pa uh, treated patients um, with AML. Uh, and the question we asked, we said, okay, there are various ways of treating AML. You can have intensive chemotherapy, 3 plus 7, plus or minus something else. You can have a low-dose chemotherapy, like low-dose RSC. You can use hypomethylating agent, like 5-azacitidine and decitamine. Or you can simply do best supportive care. And we wanted to compare these four approaches in patients who have either a favorable cytogenetics or poor cytogenetics, or a good performance status or a poor performance status, or no or low level of comorbidity or a high level of comorbidity. So you cannot extract that from the literature uh, just with a meta-analysis. The literature is too heterogeneous, but we had baseline data, and then we put them in a decision analysis model to uh, adjust the results of these treatments to the proportion of patients who had um, uh, cytogenetics differences or performance status differences or comorbidity differences. So the results, it's still the early result of the model, but they seem to indicate that you really have two winners among the regimen we give and two regimens that, that do not give as good as an effect. So the two best results are either intensive chemotherapy or hypomethylating agent. And they are really neck to neck. And uh, that's pretty much no matter what uh, the, the other aspects of uh, the leukemia or the patients are. Now, our baseline scenario, if a patient is in very good condition, has low comorbidity, then they tend to do better slightly with uh, intensive chemotherapy, no matter what their cytogenetic is. And if all the factors are favorable, they have about a 59% chance of being alive one year later. Uh, for all the other patients, the one with poor performance status, the one with some comorbidity, it seems like hypomethylating agents have a slight advantage. Now, these are the baseline assumptions of our model. We still have to run a full sensitivity analysis to see what percentage of the time this is true. So for the moment, I, I really say, okay, you have two regimens where patients are doing better and two regimens, low-dose uh, um, chemotherapy and best supportive care, where uh, really they don't live as long. Uh, with these, uh, if, especially if patients have poor function, I mean, people are gone after six months. <laughs> yeah. I, I think if I, if I wanted to test the treatments in the future, I, I would clearly prefer hypomethylating agents. Uh, they have a toxicity that is uh, you know, actually a better profile than low-dose chemotherapy. Uh, there are some old data that show that uh, they tried to demonstrate that you had less hospital time with low-dose chemotherapy versus intensive chemotherapy. And actually, they had the same amount of hospital times because of infections or bleeding or things like that. So uh, it, seems like, it seems like a good idea, but it's not uh, bringing the promise it has. So if I wanted to do a new study for um, AML in older patients above 70, I would choose a backbone of either an intensive regimen or a hypomethylating agent and add a new targeted drug to these. That's, that's what I would choose as a regimen for future use in older patients.
Uh, I will have that done uh, by the end of the academic year. So next, next ASCO probably uh, I will have more complete results and we have started writing the article so that should be published soon. And what we are going to do is once we have a model that seems stable, we are going to take uh, the Moffitt database where we have more than a thousand AML patients above the age of 70 and we are going to validate the model. Because it's often a step that is missing in all these models and we think it's very important to make sure it works in a different cohort of patients. Mm -hmm.